Hey guys, thanks for joining me up to learn to play games. My name is Lance, and today I'm going to teach you how to play Tales of Glory. This is a new game from Ankama. It is a 2-5 to five player game that takes roughly 30-60 to 60 minutes to play, and it is a competitive game, so each player is going to be working against the other players to gain the most prestige points to be the overall winner at the end of the game. In the game itself, each player is playing a hero that is off on a quest to discover new locations and new people, new treasures, and defeating off monsters all in the hopes of gaining the most prestige points over 10 rounds to be the overall winner at the end of the game. So my thoughts on this one, I had a good time with it and would recommend it to any group that enjoys competitive games or tableau building games or point games as it does a really good job with that. And then once the players are familiar with the game, it plays very quickly as a lot of the stuff during the round can be done simultaneously so rounds will really speed along and there won't be a lot of downtime in between players. I also really enjoyed the artwork with this one. It really immerses you within the, the theme of the game, and I just really enjoyed that as well. And the game itself, the production on it was really good. The cardstock and the boards and everything are really nice, thick boards. The chits hold together really well, and the game itself is laid out very nice. The rule book is easy to pick up, and even there's some nice reminders on the game board and things about different costs and whatnot throughout the game. So they really did a good job with that and helped players pick up the game very quickly. So of course these are just my opinions. I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments below. Let me know if this is one that you picked up or are interested in picking up. And if you enjoy these videos, if you like what I do, please consider the like button and subscribing to my channel as it really does help me to continue to bring these games to you guys and teach you how to play them. If you want to stay up to date on all my videos, also consider ringing that bell so you get notifications anytime I release new content. So let's head to the table and I'll teach you guys how to play. Adventure tiles are the main components in the game and there's going to be three levels, levels one, two, and three. You're also going to have quest tiles, which are an optional add-on, and once the players are more experienced with the game, you can choose to add those on, but I would not recommend that for your first couple games. Then moving over to the tiles themselves, let's take a look at a breakdown. There are four different types. We have character, palace, monster, and treasure tiles. Then on the other side is, is going to list the costs of that card to recruit it. Some of the cards will not have a cost, which means that they are free unless they're in a certain area, which I'll explain a little bit later. On the perimeter of the card, you'll have the connectors, which some of the cards will have four connectors, and some of them will have less. As you can see here with the treasure card, it only has three connectors. Some of these connectors will also have half of a key, so when you place them together, it will create a key symbol, which means that you will receive a key that you can use to open a chest. Then each of the cards will have a listed reward when it is built in your area. So with this one, we will receive one battle point, and with this one, we would receive four prestige points. Finally, if, the, if there's a chest on the card, it'll show what rewards are, are available if you open the chest with a key by gaining one, and there's a number of ways you can get keys. Now, the one exception to this is the palace cards, as they work a little bit differently, as you can see. They don't really have the same configuration. They are going to be based on the connections you make and are going to have a requirement in order to receive the reward that is listed underneath it. So, on the two sides here, we have to connect treasure card or tiles to it to receive the two prestige points. And if we connect other palaces to the top and bottom sections here, we would receive two prestige points. Now, we are able to connect it to another type of tile, such as this treasure tile here, but then we would not receive the rewards that are listed on the palace there. And then the final thing I want to go over before moving into setup is the board itself. So the board is double-sided. You'll have a four or five player side on one side and the two and three player side on the other. For the game that I'm going to be setting up, I'll be playing with three players, so we'll be using this side. So there'll be six locations that we'll be placing the tiles on, and these will be placed face up on this area. Each of these is going to have a number above it or below it, depending upon its location. There's also some good references on the side of the board. So first off, in the f six, five, and four locations, it's going to cost you whatever resources that are in the top corner, plus an additional coin or potion, your choice. For these three locations. Then on the bottom of the card we have two more references. The first one here is if you discard a tile instead of building it, you will receive a coin, a potion, and a key. And then the other thing is, is that potions can count for battle or magic. And each one that you discard will count as one of these. And that is good for purchasing cards. I'll explain that more a little bit later. Finally, you're also going to have a discard tile, which there are two different ones included and they're double-sided based on the number of players, which is listed in the top corner here. So this is the four or five one, so we can return this to the boxes. We're not going to use it. We'll be using the three-player one, which tells us that we're going to be discarding two tiles, 
at the beginning of the game and then as well at the end of each turn and I'll cover that more as well. And this will simply go off to the side of the board here next to the one space. For board setup, the first thing you're going to do is based on the number of players, you're going to place the board on that side face up. So we're playing with a three player game, so we'll have that board up. Then you go ahead and grab the discard tiles and again take the one that matches the number of players you're playing. The other one can be returned to the game box as you're not going to use it for this game. Next you can place out all the tokens you're going to be using and for this video I'm going to be using a Crystal Fortress pod sets. And if you want to find out more about these there'll be a link in the description below to their website. Next go ahead and grab all of the adventure tiles and separate them into their three groups. With the number one tiles you go ahead and start off by placing them out in the six different slots on the board. And in a two or three player game, you're also going to discard two of them in the discard right off the bat. From there, the rest of them can be set off to the side and will be used at the end of each round. For player setup, you're going to either randomly deal each player a hero card, or alternatively, the players can select which hero they want to play. And then they're going to place that in their playing area and make sure you have plenty of space around the board as you're going to be adding adventure tiles to the different sides throughout the game. Then you can gain that character starting resources. So we're going to get seven potions and four coins. You're also going to get a banner that is going to keep track of that character's combat and magic level. And finally, you're going to receive that character selection cards, which are going to be numbered one to eight. Then depending upon the number of players that are playing in a two or three player game, you can return the seventh and eighth card as you won't use those. And if you're playing a four or five player game, then you'll have all eight of those cards. And then an option rule is the quest tiles. Now it is not recommended to use these the first couple of games, but once you get familiar with the game, you can include these. In order to include them, you'll deal three to each player. Each player will look at their set and choose one to return to the game box. The other two will be kept hidden from the other players throughout the game, and they will be able to use them during their turns. As this is an introductory game, I'm not going to be using these. And then the final step is to determine who is going to be the starting player. And you can do this in any manner you want. I'm going to go have, have our knight be the starting player. From here, we're ready to begin the game. Tales of Glory is played over 10 rounds, and in each round it is broken into three phases, which are obtaining tiles, playing tiles, and setting up for the next round. At the end of the 10th round, the players will enter into an endgame scoring where each player is going to total up all of their points, and the player with the most prestige will be the overall winner at the end of the game. The first phase in each round is obtaining tiles, and this phase is broken down into four steps, which is choosing tiles, taking tiles, catch up, and changing the first player. I'm going to take you through each one of these in order. So we're going to go ahead and start off the game by choosing tiles. So each one of our players is going to look at the tiles that are available on the board and then secretly using their selection cards, choose one of those tiles which they want to collect. So our player, our knight is going to take a look and he would like this tile here. So he's going to go ahead and play number three face down in front of him. And all the players are going to do this simultaneously. So our player over here is going to play. Once all the players have a face down card, then we'll move into the second step of the phase, which is taking tiles. So each player is going to reveal their card that they played. And then starting with the player that has the first player marker and proceeding in a clockwise order, each player will collect their tile if they're able to. So our first player will collect the number three tile and place that in front of them. Our other player over here will collect the number two tile. And then finally, our last player over here will collect the number six tile. Now, if a player ties with another player, so let's go ahead and say that both of these players had played a six. This player here would collect the six tile, and then our other player would not be able to collect a tile during this step. Step three is the catch up step. So again, this step is only going to be played if players selected the same tile. So going back to our previous example, if both of our players had gotten that played that six, our player over here would have collected these six and our player over here would not have had a tile. So during this step, again, following the first player in clockwise order, each player that did not collect a tile will look at the remaining tiles on the board and choose one of those to collect. From there, the final step in the turn is to change the first player token as the, the player that has first player token can never retain it. 
During this step, the player that took the lowest tile, not the number played on their selection card, but the lowest tile, is going to become the first player, unless a player collects a tile that gives them the first player token. So our player over here that collected number two tile will be the player that will receive the first player token. The second phase in the round is playing tiles, which is broken into three steps again, which is paying for the tiles, placing the tiles, and collecting the reward. Now in your game, you can choose to do this all simultaneously between the players, and each of these steps can be done in succession. You don't have to necessarily wait and go around, but for the sake of the video, I am going to break it down and do it in each one of the sections so you can see the process and how I do it. So the first step is to pay for the tile. So each of the tiles is going to have a cost in the top corner. If a tile does not list a cost, then you don't have to pay a cost for that tile. Now, if a player collects a tile from the top three sections here, or on the back side, the top four, as it is shown, it is going to cost either additional coin or potion of that player's choice on top of whatever the tile costs. Now, another important note is with the combat and magic. If a tile requires combat or magic, you do not discard the tokens on there. You simply are going to calculate them based on your current levels for each of those. So for example, with this tile here, it does cost one magic. So if a player has one magic, then they have met the cost for that tile. Alternatively, as shown here as well, you can substitute a potion for each combat or magic respectively. So with this tile here costing two combat and a magic, if our player over here collected it, she could spend two potions and then she has a combat of one to meet the requirements of that card. The other option you have is to discard the tile completely, not paying its cost, or if you cannot pay its cost, then you'll discard it and you'll receive the rewards that are listed, which are one coin, one potion, and a key. So let's go ahead and start. The first player, the player has a first player token, will start off by paying their cost. The tile does not cost anything, and she did gain it from the number two space, so there is no additional cost to that tile. Moving over to our next player in clockwise order, our player over here has a tile that's going to cost her one, and she did gain it from the number six section, so it is going to cost her either an additional coin or potion. So she'll go ahead and spend the coin for the card and a potion to meet the requirements of the additional cost. Finally, over here with our knight, he has a card that's going to cost him three coins, and he gained it from the number three section, so there is no additional cost. The one other important thing with paying for tiles is that you have to be able to pay the entire cost of the tile. You cannot wait till you get the reward to help you pay for the cost of a tile. From there, we're ready to move on to the second step, which is placing your tile. And this step and the following step are going to be skipped if you chose to sell your tile to begin with. So during this step, you're going to follow a set of rules by starting with the first player and moving around the board. Each player is going to place their tile, connecting it to other tiles that are already part of their board. In order to connect the tile, you want to connect it so that it creates a diamond shape. So if there is no diamond on that, or no half diamond on that side, you cannot connect your tile to that side. In order to connect tile, you're going to connect it and it'll make either an empty diamond, a diamond with half a key in it, or a diamond with a complete key in it. The other important things are that you are not allowed to change the orientation of your tile, so you cannot do it like this. It has to be orientated to match your other tiles, so all of them have to be facing the same direction. The other important thing is, let's go ahead and say, for example, that we had a couple other tiles here, such as this. Now, with this, you could not choose to place this tile here because even though you create a diamond here, you have an empty, you only have half of the diamond here, and this side is blank, so you could not place it there. But on the other hand, if this tile was over here, then you could place it because you are making you are completing the diamonds on both of those areas. All right, so once a player has placed their their tile, then we're ready to move on to the next player in clockwise order. There's a couple of important notes with palace tiles that I'm going to cover a little bit later in the section. For now, we're going to go ahead and place this tile over here. And then finally, our knight over here is going to place his tile, and he's going to place it here so that he can create a key. So when a player creates a key, they're going to take a key token, and I'll explain how that works in the next step. And then the final step is going to be collecting rewards. And so each player, starting with the first player and going around the table, again, if a player traded in their tile, they will not receive a reward during this step. 
each player is going to collect a reward based on the tile that they've placed, and that is going to be listed above any treasure or, or any chests that they have. So with our player over here, they're going to see, receive two prestige points. So we'll place that in their section. Moving over to the next player over here, placed a palace. And like I said in the previous step, there is some special rules for those. So with some of the palace tiles, they're going to have requirements when you make a connection. So with this tile here, as you can see, there's an image of a palace token, which means that if you connect this end of it with another palace card, then you're going to receive the three prestige points. You can still connect it with any other card, so we could connect it here but then you're not gonna receive the reward for that. It's just a connection. So, so with our player's palace over here, there is no requirements. So they're simply going to receive one coin for making that connection. And then finally, our player over here had made that connection. So they're gonna receive one magic and one combat for that. And then they also did generate that key, which must be spent immediately. That you're not allowed to hold on to key tokens. Now there is a couple of special rules with the key tokens. So with these, you have to spend, if you make them as part of a connection, you must spend them either on the, on the tile that you, the, one of the two tiles that forms that connection, or with the hero tile. As our player made that connection as their first tile, they have to play it on one of those two sections. Now, if you get a key from other resources, such as getting a chest or selling a, or trading in a tile, then you can use that on any of the tiles in your kingdom that are already connected. So our player is going to place this one on his hero here, on that tile, or on that chest, and he'll receive three coins. Now, each chest can only be used once, so once a chest is used, then you cannot place a key on it anymore, so you'll leave that key on there covering up that chest. Now, the other important thing is that some of the heroes are going to have different symbols on them, such as our hero here, is going to have the hourglass which means that he won't be able you won't get rewards for that right away it'll be at the end of the game and i'll explain that more during that step and then the other heroes will also have symbols that are connected to specific types of enemies such as monsters or palaces and that will multiply the amount of rewards by the number of different adventure tiles you have in your kingdom matching that type if you do not have any then you will not receive an award for that the final phase in the round is setting up for the next round. So first off, during this round, you're going to reference your discard token, and this is going to tell you the number of tiles you're going to discard from the fields. These tiles are going to be the lowest numbered tiles remaining on the field, so this tile will move off to the be discarded, and same with this tile. The, any remaining tiles you have are going to follow the arrows around the field, moving all the way down to the very first section. From there, then you're going to fill the rest of the empty slots with the next set of adventure tiles. So with this being the second round, we'll use the adventure tiles one. When those are all depleted, we'll move on to adventure tiles two. And when those are all depleted, then we'll move on to adventure tiles three. So with this being the round, we'll fill these with adventure tiles one. And then from there, we're ready to begin the next round. And our players will gain their selection cards back to start the new round. The final thing I want to cover is the scoring round. So first off, the players are going to total up their, the number of potions they have, the number of coins, magic, and combat. And the player or players that have the most will get the majority tokens. So with our player here, she has the most combat of any player, so she'll receive the majority token for that. And then she actually tied with another player for the most coins, so we'll give her the, the majority token. But both players will receive the points, and each one of these majority tokens is going to be worth four. So our player over here has collected another eight points for that. Then, if we have any characters that have the little hourglass symbols on them, you'll go ahead and total up those points as well if it grants any. So with our player here, she does have one, and it says that you're going to get two prestige points for each key that you use to open a chest. So she has one, two, three, four, five, six. So she's going to receive 12 points for that as well, so really nice. And then she's going to finally total up all of those prestige points that she has. So she has 45 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So that's going to be 53 points. And each player is going to total up their own points. And the player that has the most will be the overall winner at the end of the game. Well, I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you have any questions or comments, leave those in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer them. 
And as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch my videos and leave me feedback on them. I do really appreciate it and I try to take into account everything you guys say to make the best possible videos. Until next time, I'll see you guys later.